Where do you get started with a project? This is what I'd like to talk about next with the framework. Um, we're not going to, we're going to go through the framework, but just to let you know, we're not going to go through it in the order that you teach it. We're going to go through it in the order that you plan it. So we're going to expose you to it. Um, so for example, we did, a dry, we did kind of an entry event. We're not really going to talk about entry events until next week because that's just not what you need to think about today. We're going to go through it in the way a teacher um, dissects a project and builds it is what our goal is going to be. So kind of go through it in the order that you plan it. So um, one of the really key things about um, PBL and, and where you get ideas, I, I guess I just want to tell a story about my son here. This is my son in the gypsum mines uh, down here in Grand Rapids. Are you guys familiar with those? So there's these big mines under the city, um, northwest side, uh, where they mine gypsum now. And they've been closed for like 50 years, and you can't get into them now. Uh, they're rented out for cold storage, hot dogs and stuff they put down there. And uh, they're, they're not active. They haven't been active for like 50 years. But um, we're part of a geology club, and that's one of my son's passions is rocks. And so we got to go down there. And um, we, we went down there, and my son is, he's petrified of the dark. We go down 80 feet, didn't even phase him that it was dark. And he was so excited. And um, the first words out of his mouth when we're down there was, this is so awesome. Now I have something to write about at school. And um, so we got a bunch of you English folks in here. And everything in the Common Core and all this is math. We all know it's all math and English, right? Everything in school is math and English. Science and social studies get pushed to the side because they're not tested and they're not as important. Well, I'm here to tell you that it's all backwards. I was going to say something else, but I won't. Um, it's backwards. The, in my opinion, the subjects that matter are social studies and science because that is where the passions are. Those are the interesting topics. So you, what my opinion we should be doing is focusing on those subjects because math and English are skills. The Common Core is a set of skills, and those skills can be done in any subject, really. Um, in social studies, when we do math, we call it economics. Um, so it, it's all in there, and you can't do science without math. You can't do any of these things without the English skills of reading, writing, and public speaking. So find your students' passions and use that to find the door into the English skills. And so in, in our class, it's integrated English and social studies. My content, the social studies content, drives all the projects. And we assess all the skills of English all the time because we're going we're gonna to read, we're going to write every day, and um, we're going to do public speaking and all those things all the time. So the content comes more from the social studies and science because I think that's more where the interest is. And then you use the English and math to support those skills. Um, let me go back to this. So, one thing that I don't know where I left it laying around. One way to do it is like this. These are my standards. These are from ninth grade, I think. So these are, eh, maybe these, no, these are 10th. So these are my state standards, and the ISD here kind of color-coded them by what's most important. I think that was based on what's on the test. But, um, so I got blue, green, and reds, and to be honest, I threw the reds away and focused on the blue and greens. Those are the most important ones, and the reds kind of supporting. But one thing you can't always do is, is teach everything. Do we know this? So in English, maybe if you're focusing on the major skills, you're going to get to all of it, but there's no way to hit every single thing from um, the Civil War to present in, in detail for me. So I'm picking the big events. I'm going with the big ones. And then what I did is I cut these out in little strips, each standard, and then I sorted them all. And I looked for ones that go together. When I did this with the ninth grade class, I put together two standards that don't seem to have anything to do with each other, the Columbian Exchange and the Black Plague. And you'll see where that went with, with the project. So I made a project on disease. So I tend to teach topically instead of chronologically. Right now we're doing a project on wars and we're, we're going through other wars and later we'll do civil rights. So we don't teach necessarily chronological and for social studies teachers, a lot of them, that's a like, oh, I can't give that up. So especially in, you know, an old school social studies teacher, you got to teach it in order. Well, when you tour my room, you'll see that we have a timeline that we're working on the wall. So, because that is an issue, they don't always get that. 
So we do that to support, to let them see. It's actually four timelines of different events. We've got a civil rights one, a wars one, presidents, etc. So they can look up and down and see how these events go together. And we're really going to use that second semester when we get to civil rights because help them understand what's going on at the same time. So this is my method. Sort your standards and just look at them by topic and put them all together and put them by topic. That's one way. Another way is to start with, sorry, I'm going to grab my notes. In, another way is to um, start with a good idea. So um, after my first year here, I had a student who told me, you got to read this book. It's called Ender's Game. Any, are you guys familiar with that? Yep. The movie's coming out in a week or two. You got to read this book. So over the summer, I read this book, Ender's Game. And immediately, I loved the book and thought, how can I use this? I want to use this in a project. And it hit me. Um, I, this is really hard to explain without spoiling the movie. Do you care if I spoil it? None of us have you've read it? Oh, you have read it? Okay. So I'm going to spoil, spoil the book for you. Ender is a six-year-old boy who's in the future. The buggers are aliens that are destroying the earth. And he's taken off to battle school. And he um, is trained to be a general. And he ends up basically saving the earth and wiping out the buggers. And um, he doesn't know this. He thinks he's playing a game. But in actuality, he's commanding a re real fleet and destroying all the buggers. And after he does this, there's a real tension of... Like, what have I done without knowing it? I've created a genocide of this whole people. And he becomes Speaker for the Dead, which is um, he learns everything about the buggers and kind of records their history. And he becomes the Speaker of the Dead and tells the bugger side of it. Um, he's a very complex character of compassion. And without getting into it too much, but he has a brother, Peter, who's very power-hungry and evil, who ends up saving the world from... World War. So one of the big dilemmas of Ender's Game is Ender is a good person who does terrible things. And Peter is a rotten person who does good things. So what's more important? Your um, intentions or your actions? That you have good intentions or actions. So there's really these really deep, complex concepts in this seemingly kid's sci-fi book. So it's a really good book. Um, but what we want, and you don't find out to the very end. So the book is very long drawn out. It's not the very end that you see all this stuff. So our entry event for the kids was the tie that I got was 9-11. And we, um, we went through and um, for 9-11, we talked to the students here before, and they said, we want to do a monument for 9-11. And I knew what they wanted to do. They want to memorize what happened and all the people, Americans, that got killed. And I get that. But what I wanted them to do for 9-11 was to understand why do terrorists hate America and why did they do this. So um, we looked at all the background of American involvement in all the countries around the world, in particular the Arab world, but also other places, to see how offensive that we often are and to look at 9-11 from a non-American point of view. So. They had to be the Speaker of the Dead. They had to be, um, do a memorial for 9-11, not from an American point of view, but from um, a non-American point of view, an Arab point of view, or another country. How do they see what happened in 9-11 and do that? So they had to be the Speaker of the Dead. So that's how we combined that book into the project and put that twist on them. And they didn't even understand that until we get to the end of the book. So they did read the book? Yes. They read the book, but then... Here we are learning about all the things that we're doing in 9-11 in the book, but it's not till the very end that they even understand, because they, except for maybe two kids who'd read the book, they didn't even know what Speaker of the Dead meant when we throw in, you have to do this project, make a monument, a Speaker of the Dead. So to show you some ideas, this is one kid did in Minecraft. This is my favorite one. Um, so weird not having this in front of me, but I guess I'll stand over right here. Uh, these kids... Made, made this one, two worlds meet. You have the two towers represented here. You have the cross. You have the uh, Islamic symbol. And then it says, you can't read on here, but it says, we all, and then in Arabic, they looked it up, bleed red. So really showing both sides of the story here. And we had an art show where they show off their designs. We brought in some um, designers to do um, some of the things. So, that one started with a book. The project idea started with a book. Sometimes it starts with 
um, a cool product that you, you want to do and you think, where does this fit in? So where you go, whether it's your standards, your a, a book, a resource, a good idea, a community partner, all these are different ways to start um, a project. Another one that we did that I had some pictures up here is we looked at Art Prize and we said we want to do Art Prize. And so we started with that idea and had to de and decided where that fit in and we did a project on the Cold War and we looked at propaganda ex extensively in the Cold War and in the end we had students had to make a propaganda, something related to propaganda, comparing the past to the present. Uh, this was, and then we had an art show here. This was our, this was actually our winner, my favorite one. Um, the one on the left is the actual glamour book, the one on the right is the one they photoshopped. If you read some of the things, it was about body image and 101 ways to try and look hotter because you're ugly. Your ultimate guide to look easy. Um, so they, they put all this in there, and then the tide of the past is Marilyn Monroe there showing that, you know, the ultimate female body shape has changed over time. So they were tying that. The propaganda isn't even consistent, and what beautiful is isn't even consistent throughout history or even recent times. So uh, that was a really powerful piece, I think, that people like other things we got. We did not enter. We, our original goal was to do that, but then they said you had to be 18. So we just did our own art show. So we didn't tie directly to our price, but that's where our idea came from for this project. Like we wanted, our original idea was to make this propaganda and make it a collage and like every kid would do it and we'd put it and it'd be one big exhibit of here's propaganda. They wouldn't let us be in there, so we did our own thing. So this one was a bike. These kids brought in the bike and did the paint job for Reagan in the Cold War. They wanted to represent that and they were so geeked to do that. Here's some posters that a kid made on uh, propaganda related to Cold War. For some reason I had these in the middle. This is another um, piece. This one was a Rwanda house and on the one side it was all happy and good and on the other side was all the nastiness going on there. 